Welcome back to Vintage Bolton. Today I'm going to be looking at another set of my favourite full range drivers of all time, the Wharfdale Super 12s. Now I've got two pairs here, lucky me, and I'm going to be going over some general maintenance and repairs for them, plus a little bit of a review and then a sample at the end in some transmission line cabinets. But first, a little bit of history. Wharfdale was founded by Gilbert Briggs in Britain in 1932. And the name comes from a region in England, in the upper parts of the River Wharf, Yorkshire Dales area. Gilbert Briggs is probably one of the most famous British loudspeaker designers in the world of all time. And Mr. Briggs would go on to collaborate with his good friend, Peter Walker, the founder of Quad Electro Acoustics, and they would embark on a concert tour where Wharfdale was building the loudspeakers, Quad were building the amplifiers, and they were putting on these live concert hall demonstrations all over England. And this was to showcase their amazing technology and what it could do. And it really brought hi-fi and music to the forefront of the English people, and in fact, the world. In 1958, Wharfdale was sold to the Rank Group and it was from about the 1960s that Gilbert designed and developed the Wharfdale Super Range. I'm talking specifically about the full range drivers, which means that they have two cones. As you can see, one and two cones. And these are capable of playing all frequencies from the low to the high frequencies from one driver. And I'm pretty sure that Wharfdale developed an eight inch, 10 inch, and a 12 inch. In fact, I think there was even a 15 inch. But they really represent, and this goes in hand in hand with our FOs in, in vintage hi-fi, they really represent fantastic value for money. Just yesterday, I picked up this pair for only $50. Now what 12 inch full range speaker could you pick up for $50 these days? Both these pairs were made in the 60s and they still look incredible, but they're not without their problems. One of the drawbacks of the Wharfdale company back then was the quality control issues, and there's definitely some things to look out for. Number one, the first thing to look out for is the deterioration of the sealant that used to be on the surrounds. And that was probably one of the cost cutting measures to use a cheaper sealant that just didn't last a long time. You'll notice this because it won't look glossy. It'll look matte. As you can see on this one, I've already re-doped these surrounds. Another way to test is to gently blow. So put your finger through here and gently blow or use a blower. And you'll just feel the air going straight through. So that basically means that air is escaping and so then you won't get those low frequencies. And one of the advantages, one of the great things about the Super 12s is they, ca they are capable of going really, really low, especially in the right cabinets, big, big cabinets. But they have to be in tip-top condition and those surrounds are one of the most important things. If the surrounds are completely destroyed, it is possible to replace them with new cloth surrounds. In fact, there are versions that have foam surrounds. This, this, this uh, felt, sort of felt surround here is deteriorated on these ones. Uh, that, that annoys me a little bit. It's not something I've done before. One of the things I'm gonna to attempt today is to transplant this felt over to this one. The second thing to probably check is that the voice coil is not rubbing against the magnet. So on these ones, I can push down and the cone bounces up and down freely with no sound of rubbing. But if I do it to this one, hear that? 
it's out of alignment inside the magnet. So I'll show you how to realign that. The problem with this set is that the voice coil is busted on this one. That's not something that's within my skill set yet to repair a voice coil. And so when I came across another pair, I just had to strike while the iron was hot. The other difference between this pair and my new pair is the magnet. Both these sets are using the ceramic magnets, but this one is the bigger magnet, the more powerful magnet than this one. 1700 lines, 1400 lines. They also made these with Alnico magnets, big, huge Alnico magnets. The difference between them is that some people love our, the sound of Alnico magnets more. Ceramic magnets don't distort as much as Alnico magnets, but it's probably that harmonic distortion from the Alnico magnets that might be so pleasing to the ear. A bit like tubes and valves. So I'm going to, seeing that this pair is probably in the better condition because it's got two perfect working voice coils, I'm going to transplant the magnet from this one, from this set to this set. And I'm really hoping to transplant this green felt to this one. So say you just need to realign the voice coil with the magnet. What you're gonna to wanna to do is to first loosen these bolts. If they've never been loosened before, they might be really tight. Use some WD-40, squirt it in there, and maybe you can apply some heat with a hairdryer or a soldering iron, because you don't wanna strip these. But I've already done it before. on this pair, so it's not gonna be hard. Don't take them all the way out at first. You're not gonna to have to. Oh, strong man it. And then you can see that you can just wiggle that around. And basically, just wiggle it around. Keep, uh, you know, aligning it until you're free of any rubbing sound. Bingo. Tighten them back up. Go finger tight first. Keep checking. Yeah. And then tighten them off. And basically the reason why this happens sometimes is usually they've been dropped or knocked. Or played at extremely high levels, which they shouldn't have been, because they're only rated at about 25 watts very sensitive drivers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attempt to remove this felt safely and transplant it onto this one. use is just some fabric glue, um, something that's, that's non-acidic uh, and it's, it stays flexible, you know, because that's, that's the important thing about surrounds is that they don't become stiff, yeah, they, they can move.
Well, I am so happy how that felt surround turned out. That's looking much better. Now we're gonna move on to doping the surrounds. Really wanna make sure that they're as clean as possible. And then what I'm gonna use is this Elmars rubber cement. And that's basically like a rubber glue, like a sort of elastic rubber sealant that's going to airtight these surrounds, but still keep it flexible and pliable so that it can move freely. Now these surrounds are pretty bare, so I reckon they're easily going to need a good two or three coats. And it's gotta be applied pretty liberally. And all I'm gonna use is a paintbrush and start getting into it. one layer done. I'll basically let that dry for 20 minutes and then do another layer and see how we're tracking. So I've ended up doing three applications of the rubber cement around the cloth surrounds and that's working a lot better now without any air coming through. And you'll find if you do this yourself that each application will go on easier. The first application will seem like hell, like it's not going on very easily but liberally apply it and then by the time you get to your third application, your third round, it will be gliding on, trust me. So now all I need to do is swap the magnets over to the more powerful magnet. is what the voice coil will look like. This is the magnet, bloody heavy. The voice coil sits in there. As you can see, this purple coated aluminium voice coil, you wanna take good care not to damage that, not to bend any of the edges. especially when putting it back into the magnet. And lift that off. Obviously, line it up so you've got no rubbing. Perfect. Bolt it back up and we'll do the other one. So here they are all set up, ready to go in these transmission line cabinets. Now I didn't make these, this is beyond my skill. I had these made up by Ascension speakers, Adelaide speakers here in Adelaide, specifically for my original set of Wharfdale Super 12s, but they were not 
tailored to the Wharfdale Super 12s. This is probably before my skills, my, especially my, my, my timber skills were advancing. So I got someone to make some cabinets. They're about 100 litres, transmission line cabinets, and I just put the Super 12s in them. And I love them. Is it perfect? No, definitely not. I'm probably going to make another video in the future of these Super 12s in an open baffle system. Whether that's a solo driver situation or with plus a woofer driver, I'm not sure yet. But for now, I'm just happy to have another set of these legendary British drivers, the Wharfdale Super 12. I think they're a piece of hi-fi history. For some reason, I always compare things to Tannoy's. Why? Probably because the Tannoy's go for $5,000 a pair. Do you need to pay $5,000 just for a pair of really good drivers? I don't think so. So I'm always on the lookout for bang for buck. And that is exactly what these Wolfdale Super Drivers represent. Now I'm lucky to have the Super 12, the 12 inch drivers. Like I've said before, just how many full range drivers out there are 12 inch? The possibilities are endless. Pair them up with a woofer. Put them in a three-way system, if you like. What are the characteristics of these Wharfdale Super 12 drivers? Well, you may have already heard, you may have already done some Googling about British uh, drivers. These drivers are, like a lot of British drivers, a lot of British speakers, laid back. That laid back British sound. But like a lot of full range drivers, they exhibit that beautiful mid range magic and that point source timing. It's not a three way speaker system. There is only one driver. So all those frequencies are time aligned coming from the one source, the one point. And that's what makes it so beautiful. The Wharfdale Supers are legendary for vocals and guitar. They're sensitive, not as sensitive as some of the other full range drivers I've found. Probably around, well, after 60 years or so, these are probably around the 91 to 93 decibels per one meter, per one watt. So I think I was playing it, you know, around two to three watts in my system here in my lounge room. But they do take some time to break in and to tune into your ears. Now, a lot of people will install a notch filter in these. And I did when I first had them. And I think I was happier playing all types of music with the notch filter, which goes against what I'm about with the full range drivers. I usually like no componentry in front of the driver because I think it loses its magic. But in this case, I actually think that the Wharfdale Super 12 is one of the only drivers I've experienced that doesn't lose its magic if you put a notch filter in. So should you buy a pair of Wharfdale Super 12s if you find them? Look, I would say yes, but the price has got to be right. You'll find some people out there trying to flog them off for, you know, hundreds of dollars. And if they're in tip top condition, sure, maybe they're worth it. But I would hold out and hunt for a couple of pairs maybe that are about $50 each, maybe less. And you can always do what I've done and transplant certain parts of them. I'm about to put them into an open baffle system, so look out for that video. Got any questions about these drivers, please let me know. So for now, I'll leave you with a sample. Another royalty free track, playing from my laptop with the Dragonfly Black DAC. Enjoy, and I'll talk to you again next time.